So if you put a load on a beam, how much does it deflect? Well, we have something called the Bernoulli-Euler beam equation, which you see here, equation one. If you took a differential equations class, you may have seen this. Y is the amount of deflection, also known as displacement. X, a distance along the beam, we usually measure from the left-hand side. M, bending moment, a modulus of elasticity times moment of inertia is flexural rigidity. Uh, for small angle theta, tangent theta is approximately equal to theta, where theta is the slope of the beam, uh, the slope, if it's deflecting, then there's a certain slope. So if theta is equal to dy over dx, I could rewrite equation 1 as equation 2. Uh, the m over ei is sometimes called curvature. So one way of finding the amount of displacement is, of course, a direct integration. I'd have this formula, the Bernoulli-Euler beam equation. It involves a second derivative of displacement with respect to uh, distance along the beam. So I could uh, resort to a direct integration method to find the displacement. Now a simpler way of finding the amount of displacement is to use a cookbook formula. Uh, oftentimes in the appendix of a structural analysis book you'll find formulas for basic loading scenarios. So imagine a simply supported beam. I want to know the deflection at uh, location x. So y represents the amount of deflection and the dash represents the deflected shape. Uh, I'm applying a load p, a distance a from the left side. The beam is length l. So to find y, I've got this formula here. Uh, so I uh, read the formula. That tells me how much displacement there is at a location x from the left side. Uh, this is assuming assuming that it's simply supported, of course. Okay, notice here that the uh, load, P, is to the left of the location that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the deflection here. And the applied load is to the left of that. What if the applied load is to the right of the location I'm interested in? Well, then I'd have this situation. So in this case, I'm interested in the, de uh, the deflection at a location x from the left side. Uh, this time, the applied load is to the right of that location. So I have this formula here. See it down here? You know what P, L, A, and X are? L, E, and I? So I've defined all those. So uh, you could actually program these formulas into a spreadsheet uh, if you want to know what the displacement is the displacement at uh, a variety of different x locations. Uh, this would be a good formula to program into a spreadsheet, uh, as would that uh, previous formula, this one, uh, depending on where your load is located at. Okay, so let me do an example of all this. Okay, calculate the displacement at x is equal to 50 inches for the aluminum beam or aluminum, as it's sometimes pronounced. The aluminum beam, modulus of elasticity, moment of inertia. Okay, and here's the loading arrangement. A 90-inch beam, the load 100 pounds at 30 inches. I want to know the displacement at 50 inches. So that would be an example of case number one, where the applied load is to the left of the location I'm interested in. I'm interested in the displacement at 50, the load is to the left of that at 30. So it would be case 1. Okay, so I'm sticking all the numbers into the formula, and I have to move this over a little bit. Okay, you see how I stick everything in here? Pause the video if you have to. So I stick all the numbers into the formula. Uh, follow how the units work out. It does work out to inches. Okay, so pause the video and convince yourself that this does work out to inches. I'm getting a displacement of 56, 1,125 inches, or about a five hundredth of an inch at location 50. So how is that? So now consider this example. Calculate displacement at 50 inches for the uh, aluminum beam. Uh, the same aluminum beam as previous. Same modulus of elasticity, same moment of inertia, but this time the load is at 60 inches. And for the first example, it was at 30 inches. However, the location I'm interested in is still 50. X is equal to 50 inches. So this would be an example of the second case that I showed. Can you see it all? So 
So I say case two. What am I talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, I defined it. This case two. Okay, so in case two, the load is to the right of the location I'm interested in. So it's this formula. You see the load is to the right of the point I'm interested in. So stick all the numbers in there. Uh, convince yourself that it works out two inches. I get uh, about a five hundredth of an inch. Uh, very close to the previous number, but not quite. Uh, Forty-seven nine hundredth of an inch. So a uh, displacement at 50 inches, 47 nine hundredth of an inch. So for my third example, same beam, uh, I'm interested in the displacement at 50 inches from the left. Okay, same modulus of elasticity, Young's modulus, same moment of inertia. Uh, but this time I have two loads. I have a load at 30 inches and I have another load at 60 inches, 30 plus 30 is 60. Uh, I don't think either of those formulas gave me that scenario, did they? I mean, the first formula I used, this situation only assumes one load. And then this formula, this was the second formula, that assumes one load. Uh, however, you may notice that this loading arrangement is actually the combination of the first two examples. This was the first example. I had a load of 100 pounds at 30 inches. And then the second example, I had a load at 60 inches of 100 pounds. So now I've got two of them. One load of 100 pounds at 30 inches, the second load of 100 pounds at 60 inches. Uh, so the principle of superposition, superposition, uh, it says that the displacement due to more than one force acting simultaneously equals the sum of the displacements resulting from each force acting individually. So what that means is that if I add together the results from the previous two calculations, y is equal to y sub 1, that was my displacement from example 1, plus y sub 2, my displacement from example number 2, and I get a total displacement of 0.102 inches. Uh, so that's using the principle of superposition.